Happy New Year! Wow, I can't believe we've entered a new year, guys. Did you make any New Year's resolutions? I think this year I'm going to try and focus more on my prayer life. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us today. To start us off, let me share this month's memory verse with you guys. Our verse comes from Proverbs 2 verse 6, which says, The Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from His mouth. So, today our story is going to be about the wise men when they visited baby Jesus. While you're watching the story, try and remember to never stop searching for what is true. Before our story though, let's spend some time worshiping God together. When I am scared of what I don't know, when I'm afraid, thinking I'm alone, you remind me that I still belong. God, you help. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about knowledge, while we take a look at the story of some wise guys who went on an epic road trip. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. I want to know what's in this box. So do I. You mean you didn't wrap it? Nope. It's a leftover gift I forgot about. There's no from on the gift tag. Yeah, I don't know who left it. So open it already. Uh-uh. What? I want to see if I can gain some knowledge about what's inside without opening it. Wait, there's a word for that. Forensics. Forensics are scientific tests or techniques used in connection with the detection of crime. Wait, this isn't a crime scene. But it is a mystery. Where do we start? Well, I'm gonna start gaining knowledge about what's inside by using my eyes. It's wrapped perfectly. 
and the handwriting is kind of swirly. So it's from a girl. That doesn't mean it's from a girl. Handwriting challenge. Yours is swirly-ish. Well, yours is barely readable. That's true. What's next? Next, I'm gonna gain knowledge with my ears. Aha! Uh -huh. What rattles like that? Mmm, maracas, birdseed, snakes. <laughs> so whatever it is, it rattles and it's from a girl. Maybe from a girl. Eyes, ears. <laughs> I'm gonna gain some knowledge with my nose. Wait, I'm getting something. Salmon kibble? Sorry, I let my dog lick my face. Ew. Okay, so we've done eyes, ears, and nose to gain knowledge. Taste. I am not licking that box. You're running out of ideas. Too bad we can't do an x-ray. Can we field trip to urgent care? I don't think they take this kind of walk in. <gasps> Let's drop it! Ready? Ready. Same rattle as before. Rattles, maybe from a girl. Doesn't smell, doesn't break. What's next in our search for knowledge? Heat it. Heat it? What's that gonna do? I don't know. I think it's time to up our experiment game. And I think it's time for... The story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back to relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, Erica. Hey, y'all. So, we don't exactly know how the wise men discovered what the star meant. Look at that new star rising in the west. It's so bright. Surely it means something. But they may have known about Daniel, who had been taken as a captive from Jerusalem to Babylon hundreds of years before. Daniel had been an advisor to the king and would have shared the Jewish scriptures and promises from God with his fellow advisors. Look here, in the Jewish scroll of Numbers, a star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. A brand new baby king. Whether the wise men figured out what the star meant from ancient writings, or God spoke to them directly, they did not waste time in doing something with their newfound knowledge. The wise men packed up supplies and gifts and set out on what would have been an epic road trip across the desert. They followed the star for months or even longer over ancient roads and through steep mountain passes. At last, they arrived in the city of Jerusalem. Where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we've come to worship him. Word of these exotic visitors quickly made its way to King Herod at the palace. Now, Herod had been appointed ruler of Judea by Roman Caesar, but the position was not secure. The last thing he wanted was some upstart new king to challenge him. So he called for the Jewish priests and teachers of the law. Where's this Jewish Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem. <laughs> How do you know? The prophet Micah, your majesty. He says, but you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people Israel like a shepherd. Oh, well, I see. Have these uh, wise men come see me, huh? Keep it on the down low. The wise men soon arrived at the palace. King Herod asked to know when the star had appeared and tried to put on a good face on his fear and brewing anger. 
I want you to go to Bethlehem for me. Search for this child and report back when you find him. Then I can go and um, worship him. <laughs> King Herod had no intention of honoring Jesus. In fact, he wanted to get rid of him. But the wise men didn't know this. They went on their way and were filled with joy when they saw the star again. It went ahead of them until it stopped right over the place where Jesus and his family were staying. Look, it stopped. This must be the place. I'll knock. The wise men were welcomed into the home by Mary and Joseph. By this time, Jesus was a young child and the wise men offered him beautiful gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were not your average baby shower gifts. In fact, these were the kind of gifts that would be given to a powerful king. It was just one more sign of who Jesus was and would become. At last, the wise men left Jesus to begin their long journey home. They planned to return to Herod as they had been asked, but thankfully, God spoke to the wise men in a dream and warned them not to go back to Herod. So, the wise men chose a different road for their trip home. The end. That Herod dude was a bad dude. But thankfully, the wise men got the message. When God gave them new information, they changed their plans. Just like when they saw the new star in the first place. Exactly. The wise men didn't sit around wandering. They took action to discover what the star was about. And their search led them to God's very own son, Jesus. So what's our part in the story? Good question. The wise men traveled hundreds of miles over months and months to discover more about God. But we can begin learning more about who God is right now, today. The Apostle Paul wrote, Ever since the world was created, it has been possible to see the qualities of God that are not seen. Those things can be seen in what has been made. So all the things we can find in nature can tell us more about God and all the things we study through science. That's right. I mean, just look at a leaf under a microscope or a bug or a human cell. They are amazing. You will be in awe of what God created. Or go outside and look at the night sky. God made vast galaxies, millions of miles apart, filled with millions of stars. Our God is so big. So big. You can learn about God through the people God created too. Your classmates or neighbors. They're all made in God's image and show a little bit of who God is. So stay curious about everything. Yeah, and ask a lot of questions. <laughs> you got it. There is no end to what you can discover about God. See you next time. Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. Never stop searching for what's true. I still want to know what's inside. And I think I know. How? I just got a text from my Aunt Beth asking how I liked her gift. This gift? She always sends me a movie streaming gift card and microwave popcorn. See, we should have heated it. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. Can we heat it now? I'm hungry. Sure. As they said in our story, it's possible to look at God's creation and see the qualities of God that are not technically seen. Sometimes when I go for walks in nature and everything seems so quiet and harmonious, I feel like I'm experiencing the peace of God's presence. When I have meaningful conversations and relationships with people, I'm reminded about how much God cares about His relationships with us too. God's goodness and truth is everywhere. We just got to keep searching for it. Okay guys, so now it's time for our reflection questions that you can answer together with your family. So pause the video when the reflection questions pop up on the screen, and once you're done, you can grab your younger brothers and sisters for the preschool service.
See something amazing? When you move one gear, all the other gears move too. Wow! Turning one little gear even moves the bigger ones. Isn't that amazing? Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Peyton. Who? Who? I heard you say. Something amazing has come your way. I was talking about my toy with lots of cool gears. It isn't just amazing. It's amazingly amazing. Gears can be amazing. It's true. I have a story of someone more amazing for you. Listen to this. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. Well, hello, friends. I'm Aisha. Welcome to my cupcake food truck. Do you want to step into my cupcake workshop and see my latest creation? Ta-da! <laughs> it's a cupcake delivery machine. You can choose strawberry, vanilla, sprinkles, chocolate, whenever it comes around. Isn't it amazing? And if you think that is amazing, wait till I tell you today's story. If you're ready, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. Uh, 
Okay, so today's true story from the Bible is about someone amazing. But before I show you who it is, we need to practice our that's amazing face. Because when you see something that is truly incredibly amazing, your face does this. <laughs> you try it. Show me your that's amazing face. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> yes, that's it. Well, the person I want to tell you about today made a lot of people make their that's amazing face. His name is Jesus. He was born at Christmas, but in today's story, he is 12 years old. Can you count to 12 with me? Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yes, good counting everyone. In today's story, Jesus was 12 years old. There he is. Everyone say, hi, Jesus. Hi, Jesus. Now these are Jesus's parents, Mary and Joseph. They are all on their way to a big celebration in the city of Jerusalem. It was so much fun. When the party was over, they all went home, but Jesus stayed. Let's see where he is. Can you help me find Jesus? Now, if I was a 12 year old kid, I might be by the animals. Is Jesus by the animals? No, I don't see him there. Maybe Jesus was hungry. Is he by the snacks? No, not there either. Oh, look, it's a group of grown-ups. It looks like they are listening to someone. Can you see who it is? Yes, it's Jesus. There he is, we found him. It looks like he's teaching all of the grown-ups about God. And, oh wow, look at their faces. It's their, that's amazing face. Can you make your that's amazing face? <laughs> yes, the grown-ups were so amazed at what Jesus was teaching them about God. Jesus was so wise and his answers were wise. No other 12 year old was like him. Jesus was amazing, <laughs> but guess what? Mary and Joseph didn't know that Jesus stayed to teach. They were on their way home and suddenly realized Jesus wasn't with them. So they went right back to the city to look for Jesus. Everyone look for Jesus. They looked and looked and looked everywhere. And then they finally found him. It was amazing that Jesus was teaching grownups. He was only 12 years old, but Jesus was so wise and knew so much about God. Jesus is God's son and Jesus is amazing. And do you know what I think about that? <laughs> I think that's amazing because Jesus is amazing. Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <gasps> hey there, Ollie, tell me, who is amazing? Jesus is amazing. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me. Who is amazing? Jesus is amazing. That's the truth, friends. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus taught grown-ups, and everyone was amazed. Who? Who? Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Jesus was only 12 years old when he taught grown-ups. That's not much older than you and me. Jesus is amazing. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. This toy is amazing, but Jesus is even more amazing. See you next time. was amazed. Luke 2, 47. 
everyone who heard him was amazed. Luke 2, 47. What a great story. Jesus is amazing. Before we go, let's pray together and thank Jesus for being so amazing. All right, close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for being so amazing. We love you so much and we know that you love us too. I thank you that we can learn how amazing you are through your stories. And I thank you that you died on the cross for our sins. We feel so special and loved by you. Amen. All right, Bayview kids, see you next week. Bye.